in our previous lessons we learned about quite a few kingdoms and how people who did not belong to royal families established those kingdoms which were the kingdoms that we talked about we focused on the rule of the rashtrakutas the palas and the gujara pratiharas we also discussed the tripartite struggle that took place among these three kingdoms after having discussed the rule of those kingdoms we should now focus on another kingdom without which our discussion on new kings and their kingdoms will be incomplete now you are guessing it right in this lesson we will be learning about the chola empire so now let us begin our discussion on the chola empire the chola dynasty is believed to have been originated from the river kaveri so the fertile valley of river kaveri is the place where the chola dynasty emerged and this chola dynasty ruled from the latter half of the 9th century to the beginning of the 13th century so this time period roughly tells you the span of the chola dynasty the chola dynasty as we just discussed emerged in the fertile valley of river kaveri now let us talk about river kaveri river kaveri was and it is still considered as one of the most sacred rivers in the southern part of the indian subcontinent now do you know from where the river kaveri flows and to which state it flows the river kaveri originates in the state of karnataka and it flows to tamil nadu this map here shows you from where the river kaveri originates and where it ends now this river kaveri has been a source of conflict and dispute between the indian states of karnataka and tamil nadu now this dispute or this contention is not new because if we have to trace the history or the beginning of this dispute we will have to time travel back to the 10th century or back to medieval india and while we time travel back to medieval india and find out how this river kaveri was a source of conflict and contention we will be able to understand how the chola dynasty emerged so let us find out more about the chola dynasty and how this dynasty was established now let us briefly talk about the political conflict that took place among the cholas cheras and the pandyas over the control of the river kaveri so we have to understand that the geographical location of the river kaveri was a point of contention among the cholas cheras and pandyas now the area surrounding the river kaveri or this fertile piece of land was very suited for agriculture which is why all the dynasties were trying to fight amongst themselves and control this river so the cholas were also engaged in constant battle with the other dynasties that is the cheras and the pandyas which were also ruling in the southern part of the indian subcontinent now you must be wondering which dynasty emerged victorious out of this well the answer is very obvious because it were the cholas or the chola empire that emerged victorious out of this constant struggle for the control of river kaveri so let us now focus on the establishment of the chola empire and let us find out how this dynasty or this huge empire was established having emerged victorious the cholas then went on to establishing their own empire here on this map you can see the extent of the chola empire the chola empire occupied a large portion of the indian subcontinent that is the southern part of the indian subcontinent and the river kaveri was flowing within this dynasty but you should also keep in mind that the chola empire or the chola dynasty wasn't restricted to the indian subcontinent alone because the chola rulers also extended this empire to sri lanka sri lanka was a different country that you know even at the time sri lanka was different from india but the chola empire was so mighty and powerful that the rulers then went on to conquering sri lanka as well now this might have triggered your interest you are very eager to know who founded this dynasty 
that is to say who was the founder of the mighty chola dynasty let us find out who established the chola dynasty and how this person started the cholas you will be surprised to know were initially subordinate to the pallavas the cholas that were so mighty so powerful that they went on to conquering not just a part of the indian subcontinent but sri lanka as well were initially subordinate to the pallava dynasty the pallava dynasty was ruling in a portion of the southern half of the indian subcontinent and the cholas were subordinates to them now let us find out how the cholas established their independent kingdom now let me ask you a question before finding out how the chola dynasty came into being the cholas were subordinate to which dynasty this is a point we just discussed what the subordinate to the pallavas the cheras the pandyas or the chalukyas yes you are right the cholas were subordinate to the pallavas so initially the cholas started as subordinate to the pallava dynasty but then they overthrew the pallavas and went on to establishing their own independent dynasty now it is our task or it is imperative on our part to find out how the cholas established their dynasty now to understand the founding of the chola dynasty allow me to give you a little back story so during this time there was a minor chiefly family by the name of muttarayyar so this muttarayyar or this minor chiefly family was from a place called thanjavur which is currently known as tanjore now this muttarayyar or this minor chiefly family was subordinate to the pallava kings the pallava kings had their capital in kanchipuram so get this clear and straight muttarayyar or this minor chiefly family from thanjavur or modern day tanjore was subordinate to the pallava kings and the capital of the pallava kings was kanchipuram now why is this minor chiefly family that muttarayyar was is of any importance to us this is because muttarayyar held power in the kaveri delta we have already discussed that the kaveri delta or the valley surrounding the river kaveri has been a source of conflict and dispute because all the various dynasties wanted to bring this area under their control because this area was very fertile it was very well suited for agriculture and now muttarayyar who were subordinate to the pallava kings were in charge or they held power in the kaveri delta that is the area surrounding river kaveri now what happened after this after this in the 9th century a person called vijayalaya who belonged to the ancient chiefly family of the cholas from urayur captured the delta from the muttarayyar so we have learned that the muttarayyar of thanjavur were in charge or they were controlling the kaveri delta and in the middle of the 9th century a person called vijayalaya who held from another chiefly family of the cholas from urayur now took charge of the kaveri delta from muttarayyar that is to say the power over the kaveri delta now went into the hands of vijayalaya from the chola family and it was no longer in the hands or at the disposal of the muttarayyar now let us find out how this incident is important to us when we begin to discuss the history of the chola dynasty you have to understand that the pallavas and the pandyas were always fighting between themselves and vijayalaya chola seized the opportunity he then went on to capturing thanjavur and with this the pallavas were rooted out of this region and now was established the chola dynasty we just understood that the pallavas and the pandyas were fighting between themselves and vijayalaya chola who seized this opportunity now captured thanjavur and after capturing thanjavur or tanjore vijayalaya chola established the chola empire so this is the establishment of the chola empire that we have been trying to understand all this while all these events together led up to the establishment of the mighty chola empire 
The Chola Empire was founded by Vijayalaya in the year 850 and Vijayalaya ruled from 850 to 871. And during his rule, Thanjavur was the capital of the Chola Empire. Vijayalaya Chola was a very strong and able warrior, which is why he was able to establish this Chola dynasty as a mighty force to reckon with in the southern half of the Indian subcontinent. As the founder of the Chola dynasty, Vijayalaya Chola constructed a lot of important temples and buildings. And one such thing was that he built a temple for goddess Nishumbha Sudini in Tanjavur. On this image you can see the idol of goddess Nishumbha Sudini and it was Vijayalaya Chola who built a temple for this goddess in Tanjavur. We have often seen that the successes of one king or one ruler often fail to live up to the expectations or the glory of the previous king. But this thing was not seen in the case of the successors of Vijayalaya Chola. This is because his successors went on to annex territories including that of the Pallavas and Pandyas. By annexing or bringing under their control the territories of the Pallavas and the Pandyas, the Chola empire now grew in size. You can see that it occupied almost the entire southern half of the Indian subcontinent along with the country of Sri Lanka. So this tells you how important the Chola empire has been in the southern part of the Indian subcontinent. Now let us find out more about the successors of Vijayalaya Chola and how they annex territories to make their Chola empire bigger and greater in size. One of the most powerful rulers of the Chola dynasty was King Raja Raja I. He built a strong naval force and then went on to capturing Sri Lanka. He also constructed many important temples and one such temple was the Brihadishwara temple. Along with that, he played a major role in the politics of Sri Lanka, Malaysia and Singapore. Now let us look at the Chola empire from the perspective of religion. That is to say, let us understand the faith of the Chola rulers. These Chola rulers were Shaivites. This means that the Chola rulers worshipped Lord Shiva, which is why they were Shaivites. It is said that King Raja Raja I had brought four Aghori Pandits. Aghori was a Shiv cult that was extremist in nature and King Raja Raja I had brought these four Aghori Pandits from Kashi or Varanasi to build this Brihadeshwara temple at Thanjavur in the year 1010. So in the year 1010, this Brihadeshwara temple was constructed at Thanjavur and it was done under the guidance of this Aghori Pandits who were brought from Kashi by King Raja Raja I. Now since the Chola rulers were Shaivites, the main deity in all the Chola temples was Lord Shiva because these rulers worshipped Lord Shiva. So we have learnt that this famous Brihadeshwara temple of Tanjore or Tanjavur was built by King Raja Raja Chola I in the year 1010. Now he had built many temples. Why is the Brihadeshwara temple very important to us? This is because this temple is very distinct and unique in its own way. Will you be able to tell me why this Brihadeshwara temple is unique? That is to say why it is one of a kind? This is because the Brihadeshwara temple was built without the use of any mortar. Mortar means that cement or binding agents are used to hold together the bricks or rocks with which a temple or any building can be constructed. But you will be surprised to know that this huge and this great Brihadeshwara temple was built without the use of any mortar. So how was this temple built? This temple was built by a method called interlocking of rocks. In this image you can see that few bricks are placed by this interlocking method without any mortar. These bricks are interlocked 
and this will help to build the building or temple or whatever is being built here and in a similar kind of way the Brihadeshwara temple was also built without the use of any mortar only by using this interlocking method of huge pieces of rock this great temple was built so this makes this temple one of a kind it's so unique which is why the Brihadeshwara temple has been focused upon in our lesson now let me tell you a few interesting facts about this Brihadeshwara temple that was built by King Raja Raja Chola the first. This Brihadeshwara temple has a 59 meter high vimana and this vimana is made of granite rock. Now you might be questioning what a vimana means. A vimana is a long and huge pyramidical tower that is built over the central deity of the temple. So the central deity of the Brihadeshwara temple is Lord Shiva and over which is made this vimana that is 59 meter high and this vimana was made of granite rock. Now let us find out one more important detail about this vimana. The vimana of Brihadeshwara temple is also known as Dakshina Meru. Can you tell me from where this name Dakshina Meru came? We have learned that the Chola rulers were Shaivites, that is to say they were worshippers of Lord Shiva. And since they believed in Lord Shiva and they worshipped Lord Shiva, they named the Vimana as Dakshina Meru. Dakshina Meru is named after the abode of Lord Shiva that is Mount Kailasha. So this in a way explains to you that these people or these Chola rulers were worshippers of Lord Shiva and King Raja Raja Chola the first as a Shaivite also named this Vimana of the Brihadeshwara temple after the abode of Lord Shiva himself that is Mount Kailasha. King Raja Raja Chola the first was a very powerful ruler and this we have understood from the fact that he built a strong naval force and captured Sri Lanka. He also played a major role in the politics or internal affairs of the countries like Singapore, Malaysia and Sri Lanka. Now this explains how important and powerful a ruler King Raja Raja Chola the first was. And he was succeeded by a very able ruler as well. He was succeeded by his son who was called Rajendra Chola the first. So it was Rajendra Chola the first who ruled from 1012 to 1044 after the rule of King Raja Raja Chola the first. Needless to mention that King Rajendra Chola the first was also a very able ruler and he was able to hold together the Chola empire simultaneously with giving it a greater size, with giving it more power, with bringing it a new dimension. Now let's find out how Rajendra Chola ruled the Chola empire. We have already discussed that King Raja Raja Chola the first was one of the greatest rulers who ruled under the Chola empire and during his rule he organized a powerful standing army and a great navy. A powerful standing army was required to bring victory in various wars that were waged with different dynasties and kingdoms. And we have also discussed this point in great detail that this great navy helped the Chola empire or this great navy helped King Raja Raja Chola the first to bring under his control Sri Lanka. And the great military and naval forces that were organized under King Raja Raja Chola the first achieved even greater success under Rajendra Chola the first. So now this tells you or this explains you that King Rajendra Chola the first was a very able ruler and he was a very good successor of King Raja Raja Chola the first because he did not let the empire to disintegrate. Instead he made the empire more powerful by gaining victory in many wars by being able to achieve success in various military and naval campaigns. Now with this we come to a point where we have to understand that King Rajendra Chola the first was a very powerful ruler which is why he assumed the title of Gangai Konda. Now this title Gangai Konda might sound unfamiliar to you. This is because you might not know what Gangai Konda means and why Rajendra Chola the first assumed this title of Gangai Konda. 
Now he assumed this title of Kangai Konda because he gained victory or he was able to capture the region surrounding the river Ganges which is why he assumed the title of Gangai Konda. Now how did King Rajendra Chola I manage to capture the area surrounding the river Ganges? This is because he managed to defeat the Kalinga, Gangas, Palas and other dynasties that were ruling around the river Ganges and by defeating them he now gained control of this region which is why he assumed the title of Gangai Konda. Now after this he also made a city known as Gangai Konda Cholapuram. Now this city Gangai Konda Cholapuram was constructed in order to commemorate his conquest over the Chalukyas and other feudatories, feudatories in the likes of Kalinga, Gangas, Palas and other dynasties that were ruling around the river Ganges which is why he now constructed this new city called Gangai Konda Cholapuram. Now there is a little history that you should know when you have to understand why this city was also called Gangai Konda Cholapuram. It is said that after King Rajendra Chola I managed to defeat these feudatories and gain control over the region surrounding the river Ganga, he assumed the title Gangai Konda and his men and officials brought water from the Ganges to this new city which is why this city came to be known as Gangai Konda Cholapuram which literally means the bringer of Ganges. So by defeating these feudatories, King Rajendra Chola I was able to bring the water of the sacred river Ganges to this new city and then he constructed the city Gangai Konda Cholapuram. Now let us find out about one other way in which Gangai Konda Cholapuram has been a very important city in the history of the Chola Empire. This is because Gangai Konda Cholapuram now served as the capital city of the Cholas and it was the capital of the Cholas till the dynasty came to an end in 1280. So we learned that King Rajendra Chola was a very powerful ruler who managed to defeat the feudatories in the region surrounding the river Ganges which is why he assumed the title Gangai Konda and then went on to constructing a new city by the name of Gangai Konda Cholapuram. And this Gangai Konda Cholapuram then served as the capital to the Cholas till the Chola dynasty came to an end in the year 1280. So in this lesson we learnt how the Chola dynasty was established. It is believed to have originated from the fertile land of river Kaveri. And after defeating the Pallavas, Vijayalaya Chola established the Chola dynasty. And after him many successful and powerful rulers ascended the throne of the Chola empire and we discussed in detail the rule of two such rulers. One was King Raja Raja Chola I and then we talked about his successor and his son King Rajendra Chola I. While talking about or while discussing the rule of King Raja Raja Chola I, we learned that he built the famous Brihadishwara temple in Tanjavur. We also learned that he organized a strong standing army and a strong naval force. Then we came to the rule of his son King Rajendra Chola I who achieved even greater success as the ruler of the Chola empire. And as the ruler of the Chola dynasty he was able to achieve even greater success. He went on to conquering the region surrounding river Ganges which is why he assumed the title of Gangai Konda and after assuming this title he also constructed a new city that came to be known as Gangai Konda Cholapuram. So these are few of the points that we have raised and understood in this lesson. In our subsequent lesson we will now focus on how administration was done by various rulers during the Chola empire that is to say how these rulers administered their territories and what kind of rules were established to keep the administration in place. With this in mind we bring this lesson on the introduction to the Chola dynasty to a close. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. 
learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now